about Mark chapter 11, verse 23, where Jesus uh, cursed a fig tree, and this fig tree, without him touching it or doing anything in the natural, it just died. It withered. And when his disciples saw it the next day, they brought this to the Lord's attention, and he told them how he did this. He said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So the Lord emphasized that you have to believe in words. You have to use the power that's in words. You have to believe in those words. If you don't believe in your words, then what you're speaking to won't believe in your words. I've already made a major point out of that. And then yesterday I was talking about how that he said not to speak to God and ask God as if you don't have any power as if you don't have any authority, but instead go and say, Oh, God, please help me. Now, see, that's the way that most Christians are petitioning God in prayer. They go to the Lord saying, Oh, God, we're helpless. God, we can do nothing. Would you please do a miracle? Would you do this? Some of you may think that that's a good attitude, but it won't get you healed. It won't see the miracle power of God operate. Jesus told us how he performed this miracle, and he told us that if we would do the same thing, it would work for us. And in, in this teaching, Mark eleven twenty three, you have to assume or believe that God has already generated the power, has given you the power and the authority, and now you've got to release it and you speak to your problem. Most people aren't doing this. They are asking God as if God hasn't done anything. God's already done his part. He's put it on the inside of you. Now it's up to you to speak and make that come to pass. Let me give you another scripture on this out of Acts chapter 3. This is where Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. And it says in Acts chapter 3 and verse 2, A certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter... Fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, notice, this is a great miracle. A man who had been lame from his mother's womb, never had walked, was instantly healed and went walking and leaping and praising God. But I want you to notice, in verse 6, Peter said, Such as I have, give I thee. Did you know that Peter would be kicked out of nearly any Christian church today for saying something like that? If a person came into a church, and if somebody was there that needed prayer, needed a miracle, and if the minister stood up and says, I have the power to heal you. I give it unto you in the name of Jesus. Did you know that most Christians would criticize that and say, I tear this man, say that he has his power. He can't do anything. It's not him. It's God. Well, that's obvious. And Peter wasn't saying that this was his own power. It was God's power. Matter of fact, if you'll just go down a few verses, look at this. After this man was healed, it said that the crowd came and they saw uh, what Peter had done when he prayed for this man. And uh, it's, they began to start uh, coming unto him and gathering unto him. And they were wondering, and so in verse 12, it says, When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel you at this, or why look you so earnestly on us, as though by our own power, our holiness, we had made this man to walk? See, Peter made it very clear that this wasn't his power in the sense that it originated with him. It was God's power. He made it very clear. He said in the next verse, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. 
and his name, talking about the name of Jesus, through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Peter made it very clear that this wasn't his power. It was God's power, but he said in Acts 3, 6, such as I have. It wasn't his power. He wasn't claiming that he was the source, but he was claiming that that power was deposited on the inside of him. And Peter did just exactly what Jesus instructed him to do in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Whosoever shall say unto this problem. In other words, believe that God has already equipped you and given you the power. In Matthew chapter 10, Luke chapter 9, he says, I give you power and authority over all sickness, over all disease, to cast demons out and to cure all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. If God says he gave you power and then you turn around and say, oh God, we don't have any power to do anything. Would you please heal this person? He may think that that's great. That may be religious. That may be the way you were trained, but it's actually an insult. The Lord says, I give you power and authority. Now, you go heal the sick. He didn't tell you to pray for the sick. He told you to heal the sick. And if you say, oh, God, we can do nothing. God, we can heal in that. Would you please stretch forth your hand? That's a very common prayer. It's a very religious prayer. And it will not get you any power manifest in your life. I know that some of you don't like this. Some of you say, well, you're violating the tradition. Man, this has been in my family. My grandfather prayed that way. Well, your grandfather may have loved God and been a good person, but I can guarantee you now they know better. If they're in heaven, they know better. They're rooting for me. They're encouraging me to say what I'm saying because this is the truth. They may have meant well. All of us have done things in our ignorance. And, you know, your heart may be right, but your head's wrong. And I'm telling you, you got to believe with your heart and confess it with your mouth. you got to renew your mind and you need to get all of these things functioning together. And I'm telling you, according to what Jesus said right here, you have to believe that God has already done this. Yes, it's not your power, it's His power, but He's placed it on the inside of you and He told you to heal the sick. And you need to have the same attitude that the Apostle Peter had when he says, such as I have. Give I unto thee, and then you take that authority and speak to your problem. Speak to the mountain. And if you don't have that attitude, this is one of the reasons why you aren't seeing the manifestation to the the answers of the prayer that you've prayed. You are asking God as if you have nothing to do with this. God has already done His part. He's deposited His supernatural, raising from the dead, power on the inside of you in anticipation of whatever problem you could have. It's not like you are powerless and you have to go to God and get some power. He has already placed His power on the inside of you. And that power doesn't dissipate or you know wear out. There isn't an expiration date on it. You have the power of God on the inside of you all of the time, 24-7. And if you would quit denying what you have and instead start acknowledging what you have, like it says in Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, the communication of your faith would become effectual by acknowledging the good things that you have in Christ. If you would understand this, you would have different results than when you approach God as, Oh God, we are nothing. We can do nothing. We have no power, but you can do everything. If it be your will, would you please, pretty please, move? You know what? That kind of prayer is common, but it's um, ineffective. You aren't going to see the power of God manifest. You've got to believe that when you got born again, you were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. You became a brand new creation. You now have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you. And you have the authority to use that power. And you've got to start speaking to that problem, believing that the power isn't out there with God somewhere, but God is inside of you, and you have the ability to switch that on and release that power. You know, the things that I'm saying right here are offensive to a lot of religious people. And they may be very good people who love God and mean well, but this is just, it violates religious tradition. This is not the way that most people 
relate to God. This isn't the way that most people pray. And I'm saying that I'm saying, teaching on these things because most people's prayers are not being answered or not manifesting an answer. And I'm telling you why. It's because we have this beggar mentality thinking that we have to have God do all of these things for us. God has given you his power and told you to use it. And this is offensive to a lot of people because they they think, so you're just commanding God. You can make God do whatever you want to. No, that's not what I'm saying. Let me refer to a scripture in Isaiah chapter 45. The Lord was speaking and he says, Concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Now, some people take offense at this and say, this is what I was talking about. They say, so you're just saying that you can command God. You can make God do this. That you can sit here and com- you can go out and command healing and you don't have to ask God to heal. It's not up to Him. You just are making God do whatever you want to. No, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what that scripture means when it says, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. But a better illustration would be like electricity. You know, in your home, you have electricity piped into your home and you have uh, wiring in there that conducts that. And then you have these uh, light switches, power switches that you turn on and off. And if you want your electricity turned on, you don't call the electric company and ask them to turn on your electricity. You do that one time and you get the power delivered to your home, but then it's at your command. It's under your command. If you want the lights on, you don't call the power company to turn on the lights. What you do is go over to the wall and flip the switch, and you are commanding that uh, electricity to flow. Does that mean that you are the source of this electricity? Certainly not. You could put a light bulb in your mouth, and it'll never come on through your power. Amen. You aren't the source of that electricity. The power company generates that electricity, but then they deliver it to your house and put it under your command. And if you wanted the light on, it doesn't matter how much you plead with them. If you tell them that I've got to have the lights on, I've got to study, I've got to watch Andrew on television, I've got to have the power on. It doesn't matter how much you plead with them. They aren't going to send somebody out to do what they gave you the authority to do. You have to flip that switch. And if you don't flip the switch, even though the power is there, it's not going to be turned on. You won't benefit from it because you didn't do your part. Well, in a spiritual sense, see, this is what the body of Christ is doing all of the time. Instead of believing that, God, you put this power on the inside of me. It's not my power. It's your power. But nonetheless, you've delivered it unto me and you told me to speak to my problem and take that power and authority and use it. Instead of that approach, most people are going to God and saying, Oh, God, I have nothing. Would you please send the power? Would you please stretch forth your hand to heal? God isn't going to do it without you. He's generated the power. He's placed it on the inside of you. Now it's your turn. You are pleading with God to move. God is pleading with you to move. He's pleading with you through me. God is saying unto you that I've given you the power. If you aren't seeing the results that you know the Word of God has promised you, then quit pleading with God to do it and instead start praising Him, thanking Him, building up yourself through faith that, you know what, God, I thank you that you've done your part. You put the same power on the inside of me that raised Jesus from the dead, and that is more than enough power. More than enough power to see this cancer destroyed, to see my headache gone, to see this sugar diabetes heal. God, there's no problem. If you would spend some time praising Him and acknowledging and thanking Him for the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus, then after you've built yourself up and you know that you have the faith and you know that God has given you this, then it's just a simple matter of using your words, speaking to that problem. And commanding your mountain, your problem, commanding cancer to die. Curse it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Speak death to cancer. Speak life to your body. Command your body to recover. And whatever the cancer cells have damaged, command the life of God to bring healing unto you. Command your appetite to come back. Command your strength to come back. Speak death to pain. Command it to be gone. And whatever the source of that pain is... Command it to remove. 
See, don't just ask God to do those things, but believe that God gave you that power. Take that power and authority and use it. That's like going over and flipping the light switch. It's not you making the electric company do something. You can't make the electric company do anything that they don't want to do. They generate the power. They have lines that they pass that power through. There are codes that you have to conform to to get that power into your home. There's all of these laws. There's a right and a wrong use of it. But after everything has been done, ultimately it's at your command to switch that light on. It's at your command to release the power of God. It's not God who's not healing us. It's us that aren't switching on the power of God, aren't believing that God has given this power to us, and we aren't taking what God has done, and we aren't using it effectively. I know that some people don't like that, and you're saying, so you're saying it's my fault that things aren't working? Yep, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and somebody, well, oh, you're condemning me. Well, I don't mean to condemn you, but if somebody's wrong, it's, it's not God's what I'm saying. God is never the one that fails. Never. Ever. Ever. You know, I was heating some water in our microwave this morning uh, to fix myself a drink. And uh, I walked off and did something. When I came back, did you know that the microwave was off? The power was off. And you know what I did? I didn't call the electric company and say, why did you turn the power off? How come you, you know, I need this drink. I want this right now. I didn't gripe and complain and talk to them about this. I knew that if there was a problem, it wasn't with the electric company. So you know what I did? We've got a breaker that sometimes flips off. And I went out to our garage and I flipped the breaker and turned it back on and did that. I have more faith in the electric company than some people do in God. That's amazing. But see, when we run into a problem with our electric thing, we don't think that the electric company just decided to quit sending the electricity or maybe they don't like us or whatever. But see, if something doesn't work in our life, when we pray for something and don't see it manifest, well, we say, I wonder why God hasn't done this. It's not God that hasn't generated the power. God has generated the power and He's put a dynamo, a generator on the inside of every one of you that's been born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit. You have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you. And if you aren't seeing the answers to your prayer manifest, then it's not because God hasn't given you the power. It's because you haven't accepted what God has done. You haven't taken that authority and you aren't speaking to the problem. But instead, you're going back to the, uh, the electric company. You're going back to the source. You're going back to God and saying, oh God, how come you haven't healed? It's not God who hadn't generated the power. It's you that hasn't used it. And I don't mean that to condemn you, but I mean it to help you. I have to apply the same thing to me. You know, it hadn't been too long ago that I was uh, dealing with some athlete's foot that I got someplace. And I was praying and I was speaking to it. But you know what? I made a mistake. I was speaking and commanding athlete's foot to be gone. And I wasn't seeing the right results. So you know what I finally did? This just dawned on me one day. I said, I don't know for sure if it's athlete's foot. I just know that I really got an itch. <laughs> Amen. And so I just started speaking, and I commanded the itch to be gone. You know, in a couple of days, it was totally gone. I don't know what the deal is. But see, instead of me just, oh, God, would you please heal me? I spoke to the problem. You talk to the thing. That's what these scriptures are saying to do. And I know that this isn't the way most people do it, and that's the reason most people aren't.